Okay, so in the previous problem, we dealt with gravitational force, and force, of course, is a vector, and we saw how complicated the problem was. We had to integrate, and we had to have an object that involved uh, direction. We had to have a unit vector, and that unit vector kept changing direction. We were integrating. Um, let's consider the scalar uh, quantity, gravitational uh, potential energy, which from which we can get the gravitational force, Fg, as minus the gradient of that gravitational potential uh, energy, uh, it's um, some function, u. Um, and so uh, this gradient of u is, uh, given that the function is only... Um, only varies with R, it's a central force, so we have a, a, a du by dr with a radial unit vector that comes from this object, right, acting on a scalar, and this is, um, this is supposed to give us a g, in, in, if we think of the previous problem with the little object of mass and another object of mass, big M, we end up with that kind of a thing, right? Um, <clears throat> And the force actually has a minus sign in because we have a minus gradient of u. Um, so the u function is uh, minus g little m m over r, and where where the the constant of integration to get u uh, is set equal to zero, so that at r equals infinity, we get u equals zero. So this is our u, our scalar function. Um, this is very reminiscent of the uh, electric potential, except we have to divide by the mass, we get a, a gravitational uh, potential, right? like we had the electric potential. Um, and so we, we see the one over r squared, just like the electric field, and so we know that, for example, the curl of this gravitational force um, must be equal to zero. It's actually an identity because the curl of this force is minus is the curl of minus the gradient of this scalar function, and the curl of a gradient is equal to zero. Um, always, it's an identity. Um, so uh, this function doesn't doesn't have a curl. Um, and so let's let's think about solving the problem that we solved before by going through the potential energy. So if we start with the potential energy, and then we'll take, um, we'll do this operation to get the force. Uh, it's much more straightforward. We're not dealing with vectors, so we have minus g times m, right? Then we have this object m. We have to integrate over. Um, the surface, in this case we have a, a surface density sigma, we divide by r and we integrate over a, a surface. Um, and so we have, from the previous time we did this, we have um, dA is the surface element, right? Uh, well, we actually wrote it, dA. We're sort of abusing uh, um, notation. This, this A is for the infinitesimal surface, and then there was an A for, for uh, the radius uh, of the of the spherical shell, and so we end up with a, the surface area is two pi times that radius squared sine theta d theta. Uh, we had, we had an r a little r squared, which is r capital r squared plus the radius squared minus two a r cosine of theta, and we know that we 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 did the change of variable. Uh, which gave us 2ar uh, sine theta d theta. And so in this case, what we have to do is integrate to get u minus gm, little m. Sigma is just a constant. We end up with 2 pi a squared over ar. Uh, we're into, we know that we're going from r minus a to r plus a, as we saw in the previous video and we are integrating in dr. Uh, and
and so we know that we're, uh, let's see, uh, and so this becomes uh, completely straightforward. We get minus chi little m sigma, two pi a, a, a squared and a, we have a factor of a there, we're dividing by r, and we're going from, uh, we, go, we end up r plus a minus r minus a, and this gives us, uh, minus g little m sigma 4 pi a squared over big R, which is minus g little m uh, density density times uh, area on which the uh, density uh, exists, right? That gives us the mass, that's the mass m, big M, we, we end up dividing by R. We have our u, and then of course, f is equal to minus the gradient of this function, which in terms, um, this is, as we know, is just a function like that. And so we get uh, one over R squared. Um, we get a, uh, hmm, maybe, maybe I made a mistake in a, a minus sign here, but uh, we should get a minus over capital R squared, R hat. Um, I think there's a minus sign that comes from here, and then maybe this one isn't there. We'll, we'll have to go back and, and, and check that. But that's the basic idea. It's much more straightforward as we, uh, if we use the scalar gravitational potential energy compared to dealing with forces.